pleased to be able to speak to you today. I'm going to be talking to you as a teacher, as a designer myself, and as a member of the larger design community in which, to which we all belong. Design has an extremely important role to play in providing for a sustainable future. Design can make it green, and that is largely because sustainability is by design, and sustainability is by designers. Sustainability doesn't happen after a product is out on the market or has been designed. It has to be included in the design phase, and therefore it comes under our control. It's our responsibility. We make it green. That's the good news. We want to design green now, and we're looking for a design process that can support the goal of sustainable and green products and services. The bad news is that the current design process is incapable of, in, of achieving green design. Whatever definition of sustainability that you use, whether it's the Brundtland definition, which links sustainability to development and talks about providing for today's needs as well as future needs, whether you use the definition of the three E's, which looks at social equity, economics, and the environment, whatever definition of sustainability we use, the design process today cannot meet that goal. We, um, designing as usual, will only ensure that future generations will not be able to have their needs met. We currently, as designers, contribute to depleting stocks of high quality and non-renewable resources. We use resources in ways which render them virtually unrecoverable. If they are recoverable, their value is often seriously diminished. We use large amounts of energy in the production, use, and disposal. We expose people to potentially harmful materials. We contribute to pollution and by extension, habitat disruption, reduction in biodiversity, global warming, etc. Now, back to the good news. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we're doing in Art Center and what, what we're trying to provide to the design students there. The first thing we've done is we've expanded the definition of design. You're all familiar with form following function. Well, we have expanded that to form, function, and sustainability. By adding sustainability, or as my daughter calls it, the S word, to the equation, we have completely changed how we design. Adding sustainability has reframed the design process. We now have to con uh, consider material and energy flows at every stage of the life cycle of a product and service, from raw material or recovered material to final disposal or reuse. And we've taken that linear flow, that life cycle, and we've wrapped it back onto itself, much like the slinky here, in which materials which have been activated by energy and design they organize and they reorganize themselves into the products and services that we need. So the model is one of bringing energy and creativity and design to organizing these materials, using them and then doing the same thing over and over and over again. Life cycle design, which is what we've been teaching now at Art Center, allows designers to experiment with the many different strategies and design solutions that can support a goal of sustainability. The other tool that we're providing the students is our Simtel Lab, the Colors, Materials, and Trends Exploration Lab. This is a, a room that is filled with a materials library and the so-called kind of the eco-materials or the green materials, this is the, 
the uh, largest growing part of the library. We think it's very important that the students actually have examples of some of these materials to work with and look at. We have um, uh, a staff person in the Simtel that will also contact the suppliers and get larger pieces of these materials to the students so that they can use them in their models and in their, their comps. Um, lastly, on the education side, Art Center has undertaken a series of sustainability summits. Uh, this last February, we had our second summit called um, System Cities and Sustainable Mobility. We are focusing on mobility because, um, as was mentioned, as, and as many of you know, Art Center is, um, has been very influential in um, transportation design. About half of the car designers out there are Art Center graduates. So we realize we have a lot of work to do to um, re-educate our graduates. And in fact, they have come back to Art Center and said, you know what, we need, we need to get together at Art Center and we need to learn a new way to design. And uh, so we've done two of these uh, summits and we're going to do three more with the purpose of coming up with a set of sustainable mobility protocols. We really want to influence the mobility industry. Um, I also wanted to show you that while we're teaching sustainable design and life cycle design process, the students, the, the change in the students has been dramatic. Um, they have become completely inspired by the notion of design for sustainability. They have rededicated themselves to the design profession with making sustainability as a focus. And sustainability is the kind of topic you can't just design for it. You, you have to take it on as kind of a personal mission and you begin to look at how you live and how you move around the world and how you interact with other people. So the students have organized themselves into an eco-council and we meet every week, actually on Fridays at one o'clock, and we talk about and undertake projects that the students are interested in. So you basically come to an eco-council meeting and you become a project manager for a, uh, a project of interest. One of, I'll just mention one, we did uh, a waste stream analysis of all of the waste that we generate on our hill, hilltop uh, campus. We collected two weeks worth of trash at different points in the term. Um, and we sorted it into 38 different waste categories and we weighed all of them. And we, through a mathematical program, we came up with an annual waste stream count. So we knew exactly how much trash and what kind. And from that, we're now trying to reduce our front end waste by changing out some of the materials that we're bringing onto campus. One of the, the hotly contested uh, materials is styrofoam. Uh, we still use styrofoam in our cafeteria. I don't know, how is it here at Long Beach? Do you use styrofoam? Do you know what you use? <laughs> well, we're trying, you know, that's one of the materials we're definitely trying to eliminate. We're also trying to reduce the, the downstream waste by being more efficient with our materials. We are an art school. We use a lot of stuff. We have a lot of waste. Uh, a student wants to design something, uh, it needs a little piece of acrylic, and they buy a 12 inch by 12 inch panel, and you know they throw away most of the materials. So we're trying to be uh, much better about uh, using up all of our materials. And then lastly, I want to show you three, uh, four projects that are on ongoing right now that uh, students are in the process of working on. The first one is by Juan David Quinonius. He is a product design student and he is coming up with a completely sustainable shoe. Um, one of his goals is to have a no adhesive whatsoever. He has done one of the most complex life cycle analyses I have ever seen. I actually have it with me, the, the draft, if any of you are interested in seeing it. He has accounted for all the material from the hemp uppers to the 
the toe box, the heel counter, the midsole, the laces, even the packaging that this shoe will be sold in, he means to take it to market. Um, the second project is what's called an Echo Lou. This is a, a group of uh, art center students and Caltech engineers went down to Guatemala and spent some time down there and decided that they wanted to do something about the, the outhouses, the latrines that a majority of the population uses. And they found that um, it, the latrines are not very pleasant places to be because the, the waste gets into this cement seat that you sit on and um, odors build up over time. So they designed this seat with a funnel that can just be simply put on top of this cement um, receptacle. And um, they've come up with a business plan. They've determined that uh, $90,000 should get some prototypes built. They're looking at local manufacturer. They, they plan to go down to Guatemala this summer to continue with the project. Um, the last two are um, the laptop sticks and Aguapura. Aguapura is also a project being done in Guatemala in which they are designing rooftop uh, water purification systems. Uh, the water in Guatemala is very poor and people have to spend a lot of their time and money boiling the water. So not only are they using up fuel, they're spending a lot of time doing it. So they designed a rooftop system. You'll notice I have it divided up into goals and strategies. That's another thing that we teach. Once you've done your uh, process flow diagram, and done your life cycle analysis, we ask the students to, uh, to then define what their goal is, what their sustainability goals are, and then the experimentation begins by trying to look at the different strategies for implementing those goals. And lastly, the laptop sticks. I have those with me as well. This is a fantastic little um, device for propping up your laptop. He wanted to um, have an alternative to metal and plastic stands that, as you can see here, I have it listed, were heavy, were made of many materials, and were not portable. And he chose uh, bamboo as the material of choice. It's made out of one material. It's cut out of a very, very small piece of bamboo. The, the stain, he just rubs it with olive oil. Um, he's having a problem finding uh, a manufacturing process. He tried water jet cutting and it just didn't give the, the quality he wanted. Right now he's using a laser. If any of you have suggestions as to how he might cut out his uh, laptop sticks, I'll be happy to pass that along to him. So lastly, I can't give you any proven roadmap, um, but I definitely think life cycle design may get us part of the way towards um, sustainable products. We need to be able to kind of wrap our creative minds around these huge and complex problems. And life cycle uh, design lets you do the accounting. It gives you a framework, it gives you a structure that will help guide your efforts. So that, that is the direction we're going into at Art Center and I welcome your questions later. Thank you.